Howdy folks, my name is Lanso90 and welcome back to my tutorial series for Cataclysm Dark Days Ahead version point F. So in the last video, I talked about how to install a tile set and how to change your fonts in game. You don't have to do that. That's just, that's just things to make the game look better. So you may have skipped that episode entirely. In this episode, we're going to talk about all of the in-game options. So let's go take a look. Let's launch the game and one last time. There's no mouse controls in the game, so we use the arrow keys to navigate this bottom menu here. We press enter to select something. And then once again, we can press enter to select something. We'll go to options. We press tab to go through our tabs here at the top. We press shift tab to go back. All right, so obviously there's a lot of options here. I'm not gonna talk about every single one because obviously that'd be the most boring video ever published to YouTube. You can set a default character name. We're not going to worry about auto pickup. It's not that critical. We're also not going to worry about additional auto features. We'll talk about what those are later, though, once we're playing the game. Dangerous pickups. These are things like radioactive stuff. Dangerous train warning prompts. That's pretty helpful. That tells you, hey, you're about to step into a bunch of broken glass or something, and it's going to do damage to you. Are you sure you want to do it? And we usually say no. <laughs> safe mode. So this is pretty important. Safe mode is a toggle you can turn on in the game. That makes it so if a hostile creature comes within a certain distance of you, uh, the game will pause and it won't let you do anything until you uh, press a button. And that's just because in this game you'll be walking like huge distances. So you'll just hold a, hold a narrow key down and just walk for a really long time and not pay attention and you might walk into a bear or something so this will keep you from doing that when it's set like this though it won't actually do anything so if we want to make it so it actually works i'm going to switch this to safe mode proximity distance 20. 20 happens to be the size of one tile on the map so i feel like this is a good safe distance number and we're probably not going to press any of those we're not going to Realists mess with real time turn progression. That's interesting. Auto save is just on now. Sure. Hopefully it doesn't take too long to save. Otherwise I might turn that off. But uh, yeah, it's default on now. It used to have to be, you'd have to turn that on to make it work. Auto notes, they're pretty useful. I like to know when. So this will show. This means it'll put down a note when stairs appear. This one means it'll put down a note on the map when weird events happen on the map. And we'll explain those once we find them in game. Circular distances. Um, basically, the game used to work sort of like a Minecraft almost, where. Uh, I don't even know how to explain it. Just leave circular distances on, it, it looks better. Otherwise, everything's just square looking. So here's where we can turn on our sound pack. We're going to do at sound pack. That's the one we installed. And in fact, you'll see there is no other ones because it's only it's only what the game came with and whatever you install. I am going to turn the music off because I'm playing my own music because I never know. Never know when something copyrighted might pop up, you know. And I'm going to lower sound effect of volume because I'm recording. You might not need to do this if you're not recording. But the problem is with any video game ever to kind of make these like so quiet. Otherwise they're ear melting in a video. <laughs> I don't know why, but it's just the way it is. So we can tab over to interface now. And here we have a bunch of options to change, like how things are represented in, in the game. We can change volume from liters to quarts, or we can change mass from pounds to kilograms and speed from miles per hour. You get the idea, right? And we are going to just leave this all the same because I like it this way. Time format, that's fine. We can change it to military time if we wanted. And most of these I just ignore because this is all stuff I don't really care about too much. Da 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 yada. Yeah, I don't care about any of the rest of this. We don't need to bother with it. Let's just leave it the way it is. Graphics, we're going to leave all, most of this the same too. It used to be that you have to set like your terminal height and stuff because the game was not full screen. And then even when they added full screen, it was like not quite right. But now the game seems to do full screen just fine. So we don't need to mess with any of this. 
and we also would have to mess with this if we changed our fonts because that would change like how big the, the screen was it is very complicated we don't have to mess with it anymore we talked about these in the last video this is just how you would change your font sizes and stuff if the font is too small to read you can change it you can increase the size here but you want to make sure you keep it in ratio for like regular fonts fonts are twice as tall as they are wide so that's why width is eight and the height is 16 and then for like the map it's square so it's 16 on both sides so on and so forth and here's where we installed our new tile set so you can see we have the undead people tile set selected it doesn't come with the base game so we had to install that manually as we did in the last episode and then select it here we're not going to mess with map memory. We're not going to mess with the mini map. And we're not going to mess with any of this unless something went wrong. But nothing went wrong, so I'm not going to mess with it. All right, so world defaults. This can be nice if you die a lot because <laughs> it helps save some of the settings about the world generation. Um, am I going to change anything today? Not really. There used to be some strategies, like in the early game, when they were first developing the game. Uh, exploring towns at night was really, really easy. So what I would do is I would actually set this to start us at night. However, that's changed. Night's pretty much just as deadly as daytime. So I don't mess with that anymore. I just leave that as it is. Initial day, this means the day since the start of the Cataclysm. And I think it also represents the day since the start of June 1st. So this is two months into the year, sort of. Or I guess day zero is the start of spring. Something like that. So the further this is pushed, the more evolved zombies are, the more dangerous zombies are, because they get, they get more powerful over time. So if you find anything that modifies this so that you start later in the game, that's not just going to be like food rotting because food's starting to rot and stuff it also means that the zombies are more evolved and that can trick you sometimes so be aware of that spawn delay this is a new one i don't know what this does huh. that seems like the same thing as this maybe this is maybe this has been moved to this and this is just like when the day starts uh, okay that is how they did they split this sorry it used to just be one thing. So this will not change whether zombies are more evolved or food is rotten. This just changed the start day of the year, which is pretty cool. Actually, I like that they split this up. And then this one, this is the one that makes it so food rots and zombies evolve. So avoid this one. <laughs> Season length, we're just going to leave that the same because it says messing with it can cause bad results. And eternal season, you can make it so it's one season forever. Which you might want to do if you don't want to mess with winter or something. Wandering hordes. So this makes it so zombie hordes are just wandering around on the map. Sort of like, uh, I want to say Daisy, but that's not what it is. It is the Walking Dead, where they have like wandering hordes that they encounter sometimes. I like to leave this on false because it can like spawn a horde on top of you when you're not wanting to. And they just appear and disappear and they don't really... Uh, they don't always make sense, basically. That's why I would leave this off. By the way, the game's incredibly difficult. This will be the hardest game that you ever play in your life. This will make Dark Souls look like a little baby's game. This is an incredibly hard game, so don't feel like, oh, I want to turn this on because it makes things harder. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. Not for your first time. No, no, no. Like, this game used to be impossible when I first played it, and then I got better. And now that feels like a children's game compared to how hard it is now. It is unbelievably hard. Do not, <laughs> don't even get me started. Surrounded starts. This makes it so when you start, there's a bunch of zombies around your building, usually. Um, the only trick to this one, I would say, is this means every evac shelter has zombies around it at the start, unless they fixed it. They may have fixed it. But it used to be if you turned this on, all the evac shelters have a surrounded start, basically. Because that was the only way only way to implement it, I guess, at that time. It may be fixed now. And to debug, this is how you cheat. <laughs> this is where you can increase your stats. And we already increased the uh, distance of vis initial visibility to 20. 
This is how much of the over map we can see at the start of the game. So we add in five squares to the over map in all directions, which is going to be very helpful for figuring out what we need to do. And then here is like our, our stat points for all of our abilities. Um, honestly, give yourself like six more stat points or something. <laughs> the game's unbelievably hard. It is unfathomably difficult. <laughs> I don't know how many times I have to say that, but I'm probably going to lose. And I've played this game for years and years and years now. They've, they've increased the difficulty 20 fold since I started playing basically. And it was already really, really hard. Skill rust is thankfully off by default now. What skill rust means is if you don't use a skill that it starts declining over time because the game tries to go for as much realism as possible. You forget how to do things. Luckily it's off now. Thank the gods. But I would tell you to turn this off too if we uh, were starting in any version of the game, honestly. And we're not gonna mess with anything else there because it might break the game. Save changes, yes. I pressed escape to get the save changes menu. So. As always, we're going for shorter videos this time around for the tutorial series. So in the next game, we'll start making our character. And we'll probably only go over, like, starting locations and positive traits, maybe. We'll see. But that's all the time we had for this video. I hope you all enjoyed. If you did, remember to hit the like button. Keep the conversation going in the comments and subscribe if you'd like to see more. Until next time, I hope you have a good day.